Number 26, we are going to solve this absolute void inequality and then also write the solution in interval notation. And first of all, let me just write down some notes for you guys whenever we are trying to solve for absolute void inequality. Here are the two things that we will have to know. The first situation is when you have some absolute value of something inside. If we can isolate that absolute value to be less than some positive number. So this is my first situation. I isolate the absolute value. It happens to be less than a positive number. Sometimes you could have a less than or equal to right here. And they are considered the same situation. If this is the case, what I will do is, I will just write down the insight in the middle. And this is how we are going to get rid of the absolute value. I'll just put down whatever I have inside of the absolute value down in the middle. This will be in between of whatever that positive number is. So this is pretty much stays the same, right? But then on the other end, it will be maintain that symbol. I will make that negative whatever the positive number is. Okay? So once again, I just put on the inside in the middle and the negative and the positive version of that number. This is the first situation. Okay. And we also have different situation. If the case was I have some absolute value inside, something inside of the absolute value, it happens to be greater than, it could also be a greater than or less, uh, greater than or equal to like that. Greater than some positive number. And to take care of this situation, I will break down into two parts. The first part is I will just write down the insight. Greater than whatever the positive number is. Nothing change for the first part, for the first interval. Or we can also have a second situation, the second end. And that end will be, I write down the inside again, stays the same. The inside always stays the same. But I'm going to switch the inequality to a less than so we'll go to the other direction. Instead of positive, I will make that negative, whatever the positive number is. Just like that. Okay? And um, the result of this right here, you are only going to get one interval. When you do the graph, or when you write the interval notation, and right here, you are going to end up with two intervals. The way that I can, the way I like to remember this is that, when I have less than, I have less intervals, right? So this should tell you we only have, oh, let me just write this down. This should tell you we only have one interval. When you have less than, you should expect to just have less intervals, which you have one interval. And when you have more than, you will have more intervals, so you're going to have the two interval situation. And the one interval that you are going to get is you put it inside in between of that negative and the positive number. And the two interval that you can get is you split it into two different ends. One to the left, one to the right. Okay. So now let's get back to our original equation, inequality. Excuse me. In order for make in order uh, to make these two works, I will have to isolate the absolute value. I see I have a minus 2 right here. Let's add 2 on both sides. So I can cancel this out, and then I get absolute value of 3x minus 1. Absolute value is less than some positive number, which is my 8 right here. And as you can see that I have absolute value of something inside. It's less than some positive number, which that's the first situation. So to get rid of the absolute value, I will just put 3x minus 1. No more absolute value, okay, no more absolute value. And I will still maintain the 8. But then on the other end, I will have this symbol, and it will be a negative 8. So I'm just putting down inside 3x minus 1 in between of negative 8 and positive 8. And now, we don't have the absolute value to worry about. I'm, I'm just going to try my best to isolate the x in the middle. 
Let me add one right here, so I can cancel out one. But I also have to add one to all three sets, here and here, okay? So then, negative eight plus one is negative seven. Maintain this because I didn't multiply or divide by a negative number. So maintain the same inequality. I have three x in the middle. I have still the same inequality. 8 plus 1, which is 9. Here I have 3 times x in the middle. To get rid of the 3, I will have to divide by a positive 3 to all these 3 sides. Okay? This way the 3 cancels out. And here we will just have negative 7 over 3. Negative 7 over 3, like that. I cannot reduce that fraction anymore. I will still maintain the same inequality because I only divide by a positive 3. I didn't divide by a negative number, so this stays the same. Okay? X in the middle, and similarly, the inequality stays the same because I only divide by a positive 3. 9 divided by 3 is equal to 3. So that's what we, uh, what we have right here. X is in between of negative 7 over 3 and 3. Um, even though the question didn't ask us to graph it, but I still would like to show you guys the graph, okay? Let's graph this inequality. And to do that, first of all, just get our number line ready, okay? And then I will just put down um, the two numbers that I'm interested, negative 7 over 3 and positive 3. Let me just write it down right here. Negative 7 over 3 and positive 3 like that. And since we only have a less than, we don't have an equal to. So you have two choices. Let's use an open circle, or we can also use a parentheses. So the first way to graph it is you put an open circle on these two numbers. And the x is in between. So you are going to color it in between of these two numbers, just like that. And this is how we can graph it with open circles. Okay. Another way to graph it is that we can use parentheses. It's exactly the same procedure, but then you get uh, negative 7 over 3 here, positive 3 here. Instead of using open circles, you just put parentheses like that, and then put it, and then just shade it like the middle, like this. Either open circle or parentheses, both are fine. And the advantage of using this is that if you want to write the interval notation, notation, okay. To write interval notation, if you use parentheses earlier, that's exactly what you need to write out. Interval notation of this will be, I open the parentheses because I don't want to include these two endpoints. Parentheses, negatives, negative 7 over 3. You put down a smaller number first, and then put down comma, the bigger number, or the right number, the number on the right, which will have 3, once again, um, parentheses. And this is the interval notation that we are looking for. So once again, um, review this, and most importantly, know this two uh, formula two things that you have to be careful with.